megabytes at least a week and if they upload their earlier stuff and if they do um let's say they do like a, a visual archive of other artists work that could easily be you know two megabytes a pop at 20 images so it's like 40. so i mean it quickly gets the numbers get big um i mean we can train them to make to save smaller files um but you know realistically if we're putting 15 weeks of work I'd say 10 meg, you know, like it's easy getting up to between 100 to 250 megabytes per student. I could easily see as a portfolio. I'm guessing that's where their Google folders are going to land if they do their whole senior yeah. project on there. Yeah. So uh, the default um, quota for just generic accounts that were created on Mahara are 50 megabytes. It's just clearly not not enough. Uh, I mean, it, I got a list of. Did I get a list from you, Julian, or from someone else for painting and drawing students? And um, I mean, we certainly could bump it up to 500 megabytes. You got so it from me. I mean, right now we might not, we've all sort of, I mean, I think there's, there's a balance between uh, stability. We've mo met, most people have either set up Google forum, or, I mean, Moodle forum or Google folder. And I think switching midstream um, might be really confusing and disruptive. Yep. Um, but yeah, you got the list from me. We tried it with my class. My class revolted uh, against Mahara and all yelled at me uh, in chat in all caps of going back to Google. So I backed off. But then Matt thought it might be a good idea. And I, you know, who knows where we're going to be in the fall. So it might be, it's just a good tool, I think, for us to learn now that maybe it'll be useful. And so it's yeah, I, be useful for senior projects. I, don't know. I, I think um, certainly training would be needed. And um, it may be that. Mahara is not going to be the best tool for the painting and drawing portfolios. Um, but it is an option. I guess a couple of the advantages or, or things to keep in mind is that, you know, it, it, um, it, it is here on purchase. Uh, students can log in with their usernames and, um, you can also set up a connection between Mahara and Moodle so that students are actually submitting their portfolios as Moodle assignments from Mahara. So we'll, we'll talk about that as well. I don't know if anyone wants to pop in and talk about maybe other use cases that you've got in mind. Well, we do have a heavy painting and drawing contingent, I think, on the call here. So we'll certainly we'll talk about that. But yeah, I think we're sorry, all can... Go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I was just going to say, since we're not the painting and drawing crowd, we're, we do, at the end of every semester, uh, a portfolio review for our students where they normally would come into the classroom and, um, you know, sort of discuss their workload for the... Uh, the semester or the year, depending upon who it is, and then it helps us evaluate them moving forward. So we're sort of, uh, I would just ask, I don't know if this is the right platform for us, but does anybody have any thoughts or any suggestions? Because we're sort of, you know, having, uh, well, uh, as you're pulling your hair out, my hairline has gone from here to here, you know. So it, it, we're just trying to figure out how do you evaluate an artist where part of it is usually a discussion as well. And I, I just don't know what. It, right. So one advantage of the portfolio system, say over uh, Google Drive folder, where you're just collecting a bunch of, of files and sharing them is that the portfolio platform allows you to curate and assemble different artifacts as well as reflect on them and there's built-in commenting features so that's that's what Mahara is built for and so it, it, if you've got students who are um, pulling together all sorts of different kinds of, of items and wanting to put them into a package where they then talk about them that's one place where Mahara might be might be useful Keith, just as a addendum to that, because um, I think we're, even though David, you said it's, the, you know, you're not the PAD crowd, it sounds like some of our goals overlap quite a bit. And um, with, uh, you guys are in theater, uh, theater. Um, yeah, exactly. Design yeah. Um, the, uh, 
But so Keith, I think one of the questions, I mean, just because this online thing might, you know, I mean, might stretch out, but it's also useful to know we've never, our, at least painting and drawing, never really used Moodle very much because it's not, it's really more geared towards text. And um, I mean, I use it in my art history class. I don't use it much yes. other than just post readings for, um, but I think just thinking about how, whether we're going to just rely on third party servers like Google or does Moodle, you know, what, how does uh, Moodle support those of us like in theater or art design who have uh, multiple, you know, uh, and bigger megabyte needs and stuff like that. Right. So I think, you know, maybe it is Mahara, maybe it's another platform. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah. And I will mention that um, after I talked with you, Julian, I did contact our, our, our server admin and, um, in CTS, and he's throwing another 300 gigabytes at the Mahara server just in case uh, your students, you know, start making more use of it, and we, we start bumping up the quotas. So let me let me um, let me share some materials here. I think I will. Um, I will just quickly go through some kind of more generic discussion of ePortfolios and we'll spend most of the time just looking at the Mahara system, uh, doing kind of an orientation, talking about how you would assemble materials in it and so forth. I just do want to make the distinction between the learning management system Moodle and uh, the ePortfolio system Mahara. Um, everyone is either at least familiar and, and many of our faculty will use Moodle, but it of course is very much focused on courses. So we create a course space for each of the course, um, course sections each semester. Instructors own those spaces. They're the one who, ones who determine what the resources and learning activities are, will be, and you know, it, it is learning focused, but it's also course management focused and they're tied to a particular semester. Um, as we think about Mahara, the focus in Mahara is on individuals. So everyone on campus, faculty, staff, students, anyone who has a purchase login has an ePortfolio space. Um, and it's a, it's a place where People can assemble artifacts, whether we're talking about artifacts of learning for students or artifacts of whatever kind. And then there is this kind of framework where well, I think those of you who, who use portfolios in your class anyway know that, well, the idea of the portfolio is just collect a lot of stuff and then curate among it. You know, select what examples demonstrate what you want to show and then have some ability to reflect on that. So we'll talk about how the Mahara system fits if it's into that uh, and it is not tied to a particular semester so um, if we may be talking in terms of use cases for you know class-based portfolio projects but I think there's a lot of potential as well for students and for programs to think about students collecting examples of their work across their their curriculum and how that might be useful so just quickly, um, you know, this is again that um, collect, select, reflect kind of framework. Uh, the portfolio system gives you a place to collect items, curate them, and talk about what they mean. So I really see a number of different uses. Uh, one is to perhaps have uh, more focus on reflective learning, and there's you know, I do whole workshops on reflective learning. There's lots of different reflective learning uh, models to talk about. We're not going to touch today, but um, you know, a a um, capstone project portfolio at the end of the semester, like uh, like uh, David was talking about, provides students an opportunity to bring all of their work in that semester together and to reflect on it. Uh, we see a lot of portfolio use for, you know, kind of documenting growth either within a class or as I say, I think there's a lot of potential across programs. 
So a lot of college writing focus perhaps on, well, show us some early drafts, show us some final drafts, combine those in your portfolio space, and then discuss, you know, what kind of a process you use as you're, you're developing those, those um, papers. And then showcase portfolios, another way, you know, uh, I think there's an uh, opportunity for students to, you know, put together portfolios of their best work here at Purchase and use that as they go forward beyond Purchase. Let's well, spend a lot of time, I mean, as Julian mentioned, a lot of the examples of portfolios on our system to date are more kind of liberal arts and sciences focused. Um, let me just, however, um, I actually use the portfolio system for my tenure review, and I'm just going to pull it up uh, to mention a couple of things just to show how you can have portfolios that are multiple pages, that on the portfolio system, um, you can assemble all sorts of different things. So I've got text, I've got images, I've got YouTube videos, I've got, um, uh, on some of these pages, I've got slide share presentations. Um, and I've got, um, let's see. Yeah. So you can embed lots of different kinds of media. Um, I do have a simple example of an image gallery on one of these pages, which I'll we'll we'll, we'll look exa at examples of image galleries as we as we get into um, into looking at the program itself. Um, you know, here's some examples of student portfolios from from some of my past courses, whether it's college writing or life in the universe. Um, but again, you can see students have the ability to bring together you know, image galleries, different files, um, narrative descriptions uh, to kind of package any, uh, what their work uh, looks like. So, um, so that's just kind of a flavor of, of, of what we're talking about here. Let me go back to screen sharing again. And um, what I think I want to focus on in terms of presenting or talking about how Mahara works, and again, this is meant to be, let's explore what the capabilities of Mahara are. So please do break in with questions as we go through this. Do you want to provide a little bit of an orientation to the platform and then talk a little bit about building portfolios and sharing portfolios and how that might work individually or, or in, in what you want to do with classes. So... Um, let me actually log out. Um, I mean, if you haven't been um, to the portfolio system before, it's just portfolios.purchase.edu. If you log in, um, you'll see the dashboard. So there's two things for orientation I want to talk about. The, the dashboard's been reconfigured over different versions of Mahara to try to make it um, more clear cut to students how they can actually um, organize their materials for portfolios. Um, so there's this focus on, well, what are the tools for creating uh, portfolios? How do you then share them? And then uh, what's available in um, um, terms of groups and, and friending people on the, on the um, portfolio system. So this is one way to access, if I click on, on the create link here on the front, I go to the page that focuses on my portfolio pages and collections. 
Uh, I'll just go click here to go back to the dashboard. If I click on the share button on the dashboard, it takes me to where I am sharing uh, my different pages and collections. Is, are you in Mahara or is there is this a separate portfolio site? This is Mahara, well, this is portfolios.purchase.edu, which is our Mahara server. So that's different than the Mahara ePortfolio? Or is it the same thing? It's the same thing. I mean, there's a Mahara.org where the, you know, the global community that develops Mahara is based, but... I guess and my question is, should we be going through this website, portfolios.purchase.edu, or through Moodle? Um... <sighs> There is, I'll talk about how you connect the uh, Mahara portfolio to Moodle. There is a Mahara activity in Moodle. Is that maybe what you're talking about, uh, Julian? Yes. Yeah. So that, that is a way to create a connection um, between Moodle and Mahara. And we'll talk, th th but I would see that more as a way for your students to actually submit a portfolio that they've built in Mahara to your class in Moodle. Okay. So, I mean, if, if you've added a Mahara activity in Moodle, students can click on it. We will, it will take them to basically to their space in Mahara like I am right here. Um, but the focus for that will be, you know, on selecting a, a portfolio then to share back to you. And, and that's more for turning in an assignment. If you actually want students to create portfolios of images or other work that they share with each other, there are other ways that we would want to do that. Does that kind of answer your question, Julian? Yeah, yeah, I was confused on that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, we used to have a more generic link in Moodle to go to the Mahara system, but we, this is linked a number of places on the college website. Uh, we could actually, I think we might have a link to the portfolios.purchase.edu login on Moodle. If we don't have it very prominent, I can make it more prominent. But if your students come here, they, they would log in just like they log into Moodle. They would have their dashboard. They would also have um, their uh, controls up here in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, they won't have uh, the administration menu, but under this main menu here, there is um, uh, uh, there are a variety of options for creating portfolios a uh, variety of options for sharing and uh, options for um, you know, becoming involved in groups. And one of the things I want to talk about here is how to set up a group in Mahara for your class, which would make it easier for you, your students to share their portfolios with each other. Okay. Um, so let's go to the pages and collections page. Um, and um, for your students to cre create a new um, portfolio, they would just click on add and they could add a, a, a page or a collection. I'll just do a page at this point and call it um, March 2020 workshop. You can um, put in a description. And there are some advanced um, items here that we'll look at later. You click save, you created a portfolio page. Um, the difficulty with the portfolio is that students have to begin to think of it as this is a, essentially a container that I can put in various blocks of material 
and arrange them as I want and uh, include reflections on that material. Uh, it's a little bit different than just opening up a Word document and starting to type. So if you've created this um, empty portfolio page, you can drag down all sorts of different blocks. So if you see along the right-hand side of the screen here, there's this um, drag to add a new block. If I just grab that, pull a building block down on the page, decide where I want to put it. I don't know, through Zoom, can you see the little uh, dashed uh, working area that shows up as I drag this block around? Yes. Okay. Yes. So if I drag and release, it's going to put in a temporary placeholder building block. And um, you have essentially the ability to um, put a title on the block. And then there are all these different kinds of materials that you can actually include. Okay, so I could make this a text block and just put in, you know, welcome to my, um, well, let's do that. Uh, I select, tell Mahara it's a text uh, block, then I've got basically a text editor. Uh, I can make the blocks retractable or not. Um, let me just say yes, so I can show you what that means. Uh, click save and I've got I've got a piece here on my portfolio page if I uh, There's a an icon over here to Actually go into display mode to actually look to see what the page looks like if I click on that Then I've got the title of my portfolio the description and I've got um the one text block and uh, it's collapsible. It can be uh, collapsed or expanded. Um, by default, um, the pages are created for commenting. So, um, you know, this is where you can get some of the feedback from you or from, you know, peer reviews. There are lots of other way, places where we can add commenting as well. Um, can I, can I ask a question about the comments? Sure. Um, are, well, I guess also it's about the accessibility of the site. Um, if the student is creating their portfolio, is it accessible only through only within the purchase community? Um, well, yeah. Let's let's talk about that now. I, I was get, you know listed to talk about that, but everything that a student uploads into their portfolio space, all the image files or Word documents or PowerPoints that they've done for classes all the stuff they put in their files area that we'll look at in a minute, all the uh, reflections that they write on whatever journals they set up, all the portfolio pages they create by default are completely private to that student. And then it's not until a student assembles materials onto a portfolio page that they can then decide who they are going to share that uh, page with or if that page is part of a collection, who they're gonna share that collection with. And so, by default, everything is private. Um, um, and students will have to actually actively share their portfolio pages with you as the instructor, which they can do through the Mahara assignment in Moodle, or through sharing in the Mahara system, or to share it with their class, either individually, um, through to members of their class or if you set up a course group in Mahara for your class can easily share their portfolios with everyone in the in the class and we'll, we'll look at that so it, it's it's a very secure environment um, but students do have to realize that they at some point if they're gonna have ever anyone see their portfolios they do have to have to share them Gotcha. Um, I could just imagine some people feeling uncomfortable commenting if it was uh, just out accessible in the right. world. Yeah. Um, can I ask one more question while I'm... Yeah, up? sure. Uh, could, could you show us how to set up uh, an image uh, building block? And yep. I'm curious about how like captioning and things like that work. Right. So that was, that, that's 
that's next. So if I, I clicked on the pencil to go back into edit mode, if you, if I drag down another block, uh, let me just, let me just go through all of the different kinds of materials that students can assemble onto these portfolios. I mean, you've got text, you've got image, you've got uh, files or folders to download. But if you click show more, there's an image gallery, uh, embedded media. Um, you can have embedded PDFs that, um, you know, you could have a multi-page PDF show up as an, as an item on the page that, that uh, people who are viewing the page can scroll through. A uh, whole journal, specific journal entries. If you click more, there are peer assessments. There's navigation blocks. There's Creative Commons licensing. So, and that might be something you want to talk with your students about, uh, Creative Commons licensing. Um, and then external media, uh, social media. If you've got students who are doing blogging and they've got an RSS feed from their blog, they can include that into their um, portfolio page. Uh, if they're doing Google Docs, they can, you know, include that and open badges. So there's a whole variety of different kinds of media and elements that can be uh, combined on portfolio pages and, and into collections. Let me, um, let me select, uh, um, well, let me do an individual image. Can I ask another quick question while yep. you're uh, typing that? Um, in terms of the Google apps, uh, I suddenly had the idea that there might be an easy way, since all the students are putting their uh, images of their paintings into Google Drive folders, is there an easy way to plug like a Google Drive folder into their page and then? I don't know. I, I'd have to do a test. Is, is this Matthew? Yes, it is. Yeah, I'd have to do a test to see if it, it would be, it would, if it would take a whole folder or if it's in your know, individual documents. But we can, we can check that out. Cool, thanks. So uh, there's, you know, putting an individual image on the page. Um, you can, um, yeah, anyway, you're probably not so much interested uh, in doing individual images. Let me, Marco, get out of the way. <sighs> but even while you have the individual image, is there a, an ability to kind of caption it? Um, because we're often, they're, they're sharing paintings and we want to be able to say like what the media is and the size and stuff like that. Um, when and, you- And following up on that, is there an ability to comment on that for the instructor or the other students to comment Right. On? So when uh, the, and we'll talk about using the, the folder space, the file folder space in Mahara in a bit, but when these, um, um, when the images are uploaded, there's the ability to put a description on the image as uh, as the file sits in um, their folder in their file space, and then wherever that image is used, it would take that uh, that description along with it. And um, one of the uh, one of the um, options for displaying an individual image is whether or not to show the the description if you put yes unfortunately i don't actually have an image tagged to my my headshot here so it's not going to show up but it would um the the description would would show well it would have a more descriptive description than just landed2.jpg whatever the description would be it would be uh here with the image if we do like an image gallery, um, let me, I, I've got a whole folder of images here. Um, and I can select that whole folder to be part of the image gallery. And uh, in this is, case, is, yeah. is that image folder already in Mahara or is it? I, on I created it and uploaded these uh, images to it. We'll look at the, we'll look at the folder system in just a minute. 
Um, and you have the option to display the uh, image gallery as a slideshow, for example. And uh, I'm going to save that. I'm going to you know, expand this out, make it uh, bigger. And see why my images aren't showing up launch photos. OK. Uh, let me actually uh, give the images more space in the um, in the slideshow. So I'm going to make this uh, 800 pixels wide. And if I go to uh, display the page now, I've got kind of a crappy page here that's got a little bit of a welcome description. It's got a um, slideshow image gallery. that uh, anyone who's viewing the page can can scroll through. If you click on details here, uh, you would you know see the details on any you know given image. If I click on it, it will pop up um, uh, the ability to, to download the image, the ability to put a comment on the image um, um, and so forth. So there's a lot of uh, ability to do commenting. Um, but again, if these portfolio pages that your students are creating are just shared with everyone in the class, the only one who's going to be making the comments, the only one who's going to be seeing the comments will be members of the class. Okay. Within the image gallery, is it possible to zoom in on any of the images? Like, does it have a magnify option? Um, it does, but um, let, let me uh, not the image gallery, um, not the um, not this view of it. Let's go back to edit, and I noticed this this morning, so. It's something I'm going to have to have work with CTS to get fixed. But if we switch this to thumbnails instead, then you would see the uh, ooh. So if we switch this to uh, thumbnails instead, and you viewed it, um, you would see uh, thumbnails here. And what should happen and is not going to happen unless things have worked themselves out in the last half hour is if I click on the image here, it would pick, it would uh, pull up a kind of a light box view. So I need to talk with CTS about uh, our contacts in CTS about what's going on there, and that light box view would have, you know, would, would blow it up. Now, um, I'm not sure that would have a zoom that would allow you to blow it up even finer, other than just full scale. Uh, that's something I would need to look into. So um, again, there are lots of different um, building blocks that you can place onto these uh, portfolio pages. And um, it, it's a good way for students to assemble a, a wide variety of different uh, items and uh, as well as as reflect on them. So, so David, I don't know your your students in in design tech who are putting together 
materials to present and talk about at the end of the semester? What kind of materials would they be um, would they be assembling? Oh God, everything from you know papers that were graded to pictures of their work. Right. To, you know, uh, they could probably PDF anything else um, and insert it in there. Yeah. And again, there's all sorts of ways to tie in external media, YouTube videos, um, Google Docs, and so forth. So, um, you know, it is a, a powerful platform for bringing mixed materials together in, in that way. Let me see. Okay. So that's just kind of an orientation to the basic building of pages. And again, it, it's maybe not a natural way for students to think about assembling materials. They basically have a blank palette. And then they, although if you present it to some students as you're making a collage, you've got this blank palette, you're bringing down all of these different pieces and you're, you're organizing them. Uh, that might be a way to talk about, about that with, with students. Hey, Keith, one question for you. Is there a way to create a boilerplate of something yes. that you could give to the class? Because my fear is that our portfolio review could, could become quickly all about how do they organize their, their portfolio as opposed to looking at their work. Right. You know? So uh, you have the ability to create a template portfolio page in your account and share it with your students and make it copyable and then it becomes a template that they can use. So if I go back um, uh, go back to my dashboard for creating a page, if I click add uh, on a page and I'm going to call it a template example, uh, make a copy of this. for your portfolio. Um, under advanced here, you have the ability to provide you know, more instructions and also you have the ability to lock the blocks that you put onto the portfolio template. So let's say there are uh, half a dozen elements that you want every portfolio to have. You could create a page with those lock that down and then when you share it and let me um, let me choose a different let me choose ocean theme here um, when you share that and your students make a copy of it those half a dozen blocks that you've included have to be on their portfolio page they could add additional material but at least you know you've got that every portfolio is going to have this core right and you would do the same thing. Uh, and, you know, uh, the instructions would be here for them to view. Uh, you could drag down whatever blocks you want to have um, on the page. And that would be the portfolio template that they would then use. So, Keith, we'd set that up and then they would fill it in? Yeah. Again, I, I, templates are a good way to help students get started. And it ensures if you lock these blocks down, it ensures that every portfolio has a certain set of key elements. But it still gives the students the ability to customize their portfolio in two ways. One filling in the the, play, the blocks that you've locked in place, but also having the ability to add additional blocks of content or media or reflections um, to go along with those core blocks. Um, Could you show us how the student would copy the template to use for themselves? Sure. Um, so that's kind of jumping down here to some of the sharing aspects. So if I go back in here, uh, go back to my um, 
my dashboard, if I click on share, or if I come up here in the menu and go to uh, shared by me, it will list, let's say if I want to uh, take that template example, and I want to uh, make that available for students in my class to make a copy of, I would click on here to edit access. And um, I'm, I'm um, right, because right now no one but me can see this template page. Again, by default, everything is private until it is shared. So we're looking at this template example page. And then um, I want to share it with uh, my geology class. I would select that, or if I wanted to uh, share it with a particular, well, for our purposes, for a template, it probably makes most sense to set up a course group, and then you can share it with that, that, that group. And um, if we look at the advanced options, do we want to make it copyable? Yes, we do want to make it copyable because we want, I want my students to take a look at this page and then make a copy of it for their, into their account. And it then becomes their portfolio that they work on. Um, you know, for, well, uh, when you're sharing, you have the ability to determine whether users can leave comments or not whether you want to moderate the comments. For the template page, um, you definitely want to make sure that you allow uh, copying and then click save. And this page is now shared with, uh, with this group and anyone in that group can view it and make a copy of it and then all of a sudden your students have uh, a template that they can begin working off of. Check the chat here for just a minute. Yeah, so um, how to make the groups is, is something certainly we need to be able to do. And so um, before I do that though, let me just quickly uh, finish up some of this uh, talking about making collections, uh, managing files and journals, and then we'll talk about uh, creating groups. So again, if I go, um, go back to the pages and collections, if I wanted to add a new collection, Um, maybe I, I want a collection that pulls together all of these workshop pages. Let's create it. Um, there's a navigation bar by default. You create the collection and then you basically bring over the pages uh, that you want to be part of that collection. And you can order them up and down. And if I click done, now that is a collection of two pages. If I view it, I'm going to see that uh, there's a, a collection of two portfolio pages here. Okay. Um, just quickly in terms of files, Mahara has a very simple um, file structure. You can create folders, you can create folders within folders. If I am in a particular folder, I can just drag and drop images onto the upload area to add folder uh, files to it. it. It's pretty straightforward. Students really don't have a lot of, of difficulty um, managing files in the Mahara system. Uh, but 
going back to the point of wanting to have a description on the images, if they've uploaded uh, image files, by default, there's not going to be a, a description. They can click on the little edit here to, um, you know, add whatever kind of description that they want to have on that file. And then when that image is displayed, it's going to have that information about, you know, what, what was the media, whatever else you want them to, to document on the images that they're uploading. Uh, I would just briefly mention that Mahara has a built-in journaling function. So if, you, if, if reflecting on what they're doing in their design tech class is an important component, they can create a journal in Mahara and do regular, I don't know, weekly journal entries. And then any of those journal postings can become a building block for the portfolio page that they're putting together. Um, but I won't belabor that for the group today. Um, if we go back to the dashboard and uh, click on the Engage tab here, it uh, takes you to the groups. So you could create a group, March 2020 workshop. And um, you can make it open if you want. Probably for course-related groups, you don't want it to be open. Um, you can um, make it so that your students, you can set up the group space and then have your students request that they join. Or you can, um, you can, well, I don't know if you can set up a control group or not because you're not uh, system administrators on the Mahara system. But if you don't have the ability, you can certainly um, create a course group. You um, may or may not have the ability to actually set it up as a course group. I should be logged in as a regular user rather than um, a system administrator to check that out. You probably don't want your students inviting their friends into your group that you set up for class and so forth. And um, you can decide whether or not you want your students who are members of the group to actually be able to formally submit their portfolios to this group. I, I would suggest not turning that on. If you want a formal submission, that's what the um, Mahara assignment in Moodle is for. Uh, it's better for students to share their portfolios with the group rather than to submit it. That still allows other members of the group to view and comment on the pages. And um, then uh, if I click Save Group, I've created this group space. Currently, the only member in the group is me. Uh, you can, um, as the owner of, the, of your group, click on this Send Multiple Invitations at Once and find uh, your um, let's see Julian where are you you know, find your student add them to the list of users to be invited and then when you click submit an invitation will go out. The next time the student logs into Mahara, they will see a big notice on the front page saying you've been invited to this group. So you can set up your uh, group space for your course. You can invite students. You can also set it up so that if they miss the invitation, they can find your group space and request to, um, to be joined. And then um, you can get them all here in the group. Once you do that, then the students have 
you can create the template page. You can share it to that group. You can make it copyable. Students uh, make a copy of that page. They fill in the required bits. They add whatever other bits that they want to add. And then they can share that um, page to the either to you if if you want them just to share it to you as the instructor or they can share it to that course group where everyone in the group can then see their page their portfolio page and if uh, commenting has been allowed when uh, it's been shared which is the default then all the you can have all that peer commenting on um, on the portfolio pages so it's um, um, yeah, it may or may not be the tool you're looking for in terms of students sharing their work. Uh, students are probably going to find it more difficult than just dumping a bunch of images in a Google Drive folder and sharing it. You'll have to figure out, and maybe not for this semester, but maybe for the fall, um, whether you know the ability to do this internally in a in a in a closed course space and have the reflections and commenting be able to build be built into the uh, act, um, uh, into the into the work rather than just have here's a here's a here's a folder of files look at my work kind of thing um, those are some of the considerations that uh, that you want you'll want to do let me just before we run out of time. I'm going to go into Moodle and uh, let me log in here. While you're doing that, Keith, can I ask a question about sure. sharing? Yep. Uh, so I'm understanding how to share it within a course. Um, we sometimes want to share within a department, uh, maybe not with every student, but with all the full time faculty for end of semester critiques or right now okay. we're doing. Uh, digital submissions for sophomore reviews. Um, at the moment, we're having everyone send us Google Drive links, but if this were something that worked for us, that might be um, an easy way to show those images. So I could um, take a page that hasn't been in shared some other way yet. Um, I don't know. Let's let's look at this one. Oops. And um, so I've got this, this page. If I click uh, Edit Access, I could share that with a uh, particular user. Oops. That's, And, you know, so one way would be, okay, I've got these uh, eight faculty members I need to share my page with. I will just add each one of them and click, uh, um, and click save. And then um, when, they go, when they go into Mahara, they will see under the shared with me tab uh, pages that have been shared with them. Okay. And you might need to, uh, you know, ensure that your students are titling their pages in such a way. If you're getting a bunch of them, then you want to be able to be be able to search for the for the pages that um, among the pages that have been shared with you that you want to take a, a look at. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, uh, one other question related to that. Is it possible for uh, like a professor to create a group of professors and then sort of share the group with all the students so the students don't have to individually type in everybody's name? You could do that. Um, and I don't think the students, the students probably don't even have to be members of that group for them to be able to share to that group. But that's something we would want to do a little test just to make sure. But that would certainly make it easier. Uh, the other way to do it would be um, for my workshop page here, I can create a secret URL 
And um, basically, the students could create this for their page and just email that URL to all of the faculty members or, or share that, that, e, that URL, however it needs to be shared so that um, you know, all of the faculty who need to do the review can just click on that link whether or not, you, that way you wouldn't have to necessarily set up a, you know, a separate group for the faculty, for the students to be able to share it with them. And the nice advantage here is that faculty know that this URL will take them straight to the portfolio that they need to review and comment on. That would probably work really well for us. Uh, yeah. Similar to what we're doing with Google Drive, but with, yeah, the added ability to comment and all that. Yeah. So, yeah. great. So just, uh, Quickly, I'm in my sandbox here. If I turn editing on and uh, click add an activity or a resource, uh, one of the activities that you see is Mahara ePortfolio submission. Um, uh, submit your portfolios here. And um, you don't really, I mean, you're not a grading in Mahara, so you don't really need to accept grades from the tool, but you do need to uh, share the student's name and email from Moodle to Mahara so that Mahara knows who's logging in from Moodle. Um, you click save and return to course, then when students click on this, they're taken to their account in Mahara, and they can pick a portfolio to share back to, um, to this assignment activity in Moodle, and then um, I'm not in as a student role, so it's not giving me the chance to pick a portfolio to share back. But let's say your my my 25 students did that. When I go into this later, I would then see um, have direct links to those 25 portfolios. Even if I hadn't set up a course group, even if the students hadn't shared it through Mahara to me. Moodle and Mahara will take uh, uh, care of the access issues to allow me to see the uh, the work. The other nice thing about this, you just make sure that that is still the case, is that when the students have submitted, um, no, that's no no longer never never mind. Yeah, these are all just Moodle uh, settings. If you did want your students to um, for their portfolios to be locked when they are ready for review, you can actually use the submit portfolio option in the in the groups that we looked at um, earlier. If, if a portfolio is submitted to a group rather than just shared with a group, it will be locked. Or if the portfolio is, yeah, it's got to be submitted to a, a course group. So uh, if, if it is important um, that portfolios be locked down at some point, you know, just contact me and we'll work through the details on that. Are there other, I know we're over time, are there other uh, demos, videos, or things like that, either online or ideally linked to the TLTC website? When I looked a week ago, there wasn't, it was hard to find any. Yeah, this, this uh, workshop is, um, I need to redo the tutorial materials for the current version of Mahara that we have, and I just haven't had time to do it. I, clearly, I will uh, share around the recording of this. Uh, it goes over, you know, creating portfolios, sharing portfolios. Um, maybe next week, because it's spring break, I'll have some time to actually um, work up some more um, discreet and 
help materials on the different aspects of using the portfolio system. Do, do you know if Mahara or on YouTube or something, if there's stuff that's out there already that they've been? There's probably, uh, there are probably uh, tutorials on YouTube. I can, I can check as well. We've, we're running the latest version of Mahara, uh, 19.10. Um, there will be a 20.04 coming up in a little bit, but, um, yeah, we can, uh, I can certainly share the, the video, uh, the recording of, of this workshop out. It'll be on our TLTC YouTube channel. Um, and there will be, and, and I'll, when I'm doing that, I'll poke around to see if, if I can come across some Mahara uh, 19.10 version tutorials that I think are are uh, applicable and useful for our situation, and I can I can link them from our help materials as well. Okay, so again, I think there are possibilities for Mahara. You have to check. You have to balance out whether it's uh, ha, you know the right tool for the kinds of portfolio work you want your students to do. Uh, I'm very interested in helping departments and individual faculty use portfolios as uh, makes sense for them because it is an underutilized um, um, functionality that we have here at Purchase. And uh, I mean, the whole ability to promote reflective learning um to promote the accumulation of examples of work across the programs all of those i think are are are, I, are things that i would want to try to promote so we're over time if you've got more questions uh send them my way and i will as i say get this posted to our channel um later today probably